Aaron Donald is a historic figure in this league, and we're just going to sign off on Nick Bosa making $3.5 million more than him just because he asks for it. The 49ers can't do that. He's not worth that. So that would mean... Uh, that that would be if Bose is asking for thirty four ish, thirty three ish. Would you go that far? I mean, wait. First of all, why can't you pay him? Because be, Aaron Donald's getting paid. You already said it. He's getting paid a lot on what he did. Right. He's thirty two. Bosa's twenty five. He's we, getting paid on what he's currently doing. Right. So the issue is, what's it going to cost you in a year? In two years. If you kind of give in to him. And you said, you know, Yushchek, Kittle, Ayuk. You know, if Bose is the priority, then maybe the least of those four priorities won't be on the team in a year or two. Maybe two of those guys won't. And just because you threw those three names out, I, I would get, you know, I would sign Bose if it meant losing uh, Yushchek and Kittle in a year or so, but not Ayuk. I'm not, I'm not going to sign Bosa knowing that it's going to compromise us down the line and we're probably going to have to lose Ayuk. He's too young. He's too young. I know. But, I mean, he, you know, he's also looked – I mean, if, if his regular season is – Ayuk's regular season is anything close to what I've seen in camp, then back up the truck, baby, because he's going to have a huge year. He's attacking the football in camp, like every day, high ball, low ball. He skies for a ten footers. He's picking stuff off the turf. He looks awesome. But I mean, something's going to have to give. Trent's on the cap figures twenty seven million. Armstead's is twenty three. Kittle's is eighteen. Fred Warner's is nine. Debo's is eight. Uh, Javon Hargrave's six. I mean, maybe you could structure a deal that you know was was uh, advantageous in the first couple years and more punitive on the back end to try to keep the the roster together. But sans that, there's going to be some offletting of of talent in the offseason. And and they already have an $840,000 starting quarterback in a league where starting quarterbacks make 20-plus million. 888-957-9570 is the number. Matt Steinmetz along with Larry Kruger and... If you're Jed York, do you make Nick Bosa the highest paid player in NFL history? That's essentially what we're talking about. $102 million his brother Joey Bosa got in guaranteed money. Nick's probably asking for one ten at least. Question is, are you making Nick Bosa the highest paid defensive player in the history of the game? And if you do, are you willing to compromise down the line with, with your roster? Go to Mike. That's eight 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 nine five seven nine five seven zero. Let's go to Mike. Mike's in San Jose. What's up, Mike? How you doing? What's up, fellas? Hey. Great conversation. Long, 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 long time, Larry listener. So always happy nice. when Larry's on. Thank you, man. Appreciate um, you. I, I I come in a little bit different. I'm sixty six. I've been a management negotiator most of my life, which is not usually the popular side. But I I would. First of all, when you say what Kyle and John say, you'll get more accurate information from the checker at Safeway than you'll get from them. <laughs> They're going to say whatever it is they need to say. Right. There is no chance to someone who's done this his whole life that they did not expect this. The Boses are the toughest negotiators in football. 49ers have put themselves in this spot. And I believe the minimum he wants from talking, just people I know and outside sources, is $34 million, And he wants every penny guaranteed for a simple reason. He's had two torn ACLs. I believe the holdup in the contract is what are you doing with the last three years? Because I don't believe he plays past 28. So those are the things in management side you have to mitigate the risk on. Two torn ACLs is a big deal. Bosa's will not. I believe they're already past the highest defensive player in the NFL. But he wants mega more, and I don't believe he'll take less than $120 million guaranteed. So what do you do? My opinion, been doing it 40 years. So just, just throwing that out there. But I can assure you the 49ers expected it to be this hard. Let me ask you, oh, I wanted to ask Mike a question. That's all right. But, and Evan, I was going to ask him kind of what you brought up uh, in the break. And we do this all the time. 
Oh, Bosa's unbelievable. He's great. You got to pay him. He's one of the best defensive ends ever. And then it comes time to pay him, and you're like, well, he didn't have a great playoff season. Uh, <laughs> right. He hasn't had great playoffs. He's been a little injury. Uh, he's got some injury history. You know, it's funny. The 49ers probably use those two injuries as a way to want to depress his market, and he probably is trying to use two injuries to inflate it, meaning, like, I don't... Urgency. Urgency. That's That's the word. That's the absolute word. So, And maybe there was, you know, when you feel insulted, that's when things sometimes get off the rails. Is it possible that in the midst of the negotiation, when the Niners were explaining why they were at where they're at, if they insulted the player indirectly, not intentionally, just indirectly, and maybe they're, maybe it's, it's a personal nature at this point. As far as... Guaranteed money, of course. The quarterbacks in this league always make the most, right? They they have the most. The most money guaranteed are the most money highest three year average annual is Justin Herbert, fifty three point three million. So the quarterbacks are on a different stratosphere. And then the highest guaranteed is Deshaun Watson, who amazingly, after his uh, uh, you know. Uh, you know, f- happy ending rub down situation. Still got two hundred and thirty million dollars guaranteed. I don't know what the Browns were thinking there, but as far as defensive players, yeah, I think I think the I think the last caller probably was spot on. As far as he probably the Niners probably feel like they're in they're in a good spot because they've probably already offered him a record guaranteed amount of money. I bet you they've already w- uh, willing to give him more than Joey Bosa's 102 million, maybe as much as 110. Uh, but he might be right that he may want all of it guaranteed, and that would blow the the structure out of the water. It would be a surefire loss for Parag. That might be what is holding this thing up. And if you're there, do you at least then open up the idea of moving him, or is it like, you know what? You either got to kowtow to him because here's the other thing, Steiny. Yep, they're probably gonna if they don't have Bosa, they could be a very rough September. They could easily lose to Pittsburgh. Yeah. The Rams are not a good football team, but guess what? The Rams are not good because they have no depth. But it's week two and they'll play this game in L.A. Who knows? The Rams could easily win that game. Then you got the New York Giants, who are, I think one of the upstart teams. They're very much improved. That's a Thursday nighter. Who knows? Weird stuff happens on Thursday night. You could be staring at an 0-3. 0-3 record very, very easily with no leverage, and then you're screwed because now you've blown your chance at the NFC Championship game being at Levi's, and you got to pay Bosa every penny. 888-957-9570 is the number if you want to jump into the conversation. You know what I have, I've written down here? There does seem to be a little bit of a similarity. You, you said maybe something happened during the negotiation. Maybe somebody was insulted. Maybe... There's, it's more acrimonious than, than we know. You know, Bob Myers was offered a contract early in the uh, early in the season and obviously didn't take it. And then Joe Lacob came out and said, you know, we've given Bob two contract offers, neither of which he signed yet. I don't see it, Bob. That's what Joe Lacob said on uh, Tim Kawakami's uh Podcast. I think it was in February or March. Joe also said that he was sh- uh, he was exactly. surprised that Bob left until the morning. He didn't. Exactly. Joe didn't know he was leaving Steiny until the morning of the presser that Bob. Yeah, right. But maybe something happened where you know Myers got an offer and he's like, "Come on, gets another offer." And then they, but by that time he's kind of out of like he's done in a way. He got like maybe he looked maybe he got insulted with the first offer and he's like, "You got to be kidding me! This is your starting point, please." And there's a way to do these deals, Steiny, where you can say that you, you know, you've got plausible deniability. You can say that you were in the ballpark. I feel like Farhan right. Zaidi is is an expert at this. Be in the deal flow without ever really being in the deal flow. Like right. we were right there. Yeah, you offered just enough to make sure he didn't sign here. Exactly. 